we're growing, we have 19 million acres of forest land in Arkansas. We are growing about 50, annually 50% 50 more pine than we're harvesting. And we're growing about 40% more hardwood than we're harvesting. We've got numbers going back for 70 years that tell us that. Well, we've built beautiful, productive forests in Arkansas. 1978, we had 17.8 million acres of forest land. Today, we have 19 million acres of forest land. We have built more forests in these last 50 or 40 years, uh, and we're growing more wood than these really fast, some people call them hot rod sawmills, can, can cut. So I believe because we built it and others will see that we're growing way more high quality timber than we're sawing or cutting, they'll come. Markets will come. We're going to have to be patient, but the markets will come. So Arkansas landowners, some 214,000 family forests that we have in Arkansas, they're receiving about $400 million a year in payments for the timber that they have harvested. This typically ranks in the top five in terms of, of, of Arkansas crops, so it's very important in terms of landowner income. Then when we look at, at the logging industry, the sawmill industry, and the paper industry, in terms of value added, direct contributions are about $3.5 billion to the state economy. And when we look at those multiplier effects, it comes up to over $12 billion uh, in terms of output and about $6 billion in terms of value added. This represents about 5% of the state's economy. And when you look at Arkansas's economy and its dependence on forest industry, we are the number three most dependent forest industry in the nation behind only Maine and Wisconsin. And of the 13 southern states, we are the most dependent state on forest economy. So we're looking at about some 60,000 jobs total contribution. We're looking at average salaries that, that are about $55,000 a year, which is above the state average. So these are good paying jobs in rural communities that support uh, a lot of retail, a lot of doctors and dentist offices. They provide a lot of options uh, for people in rural Arkansas that wouldn't exist otherwise. This track right here, this is one of our uh, tracks and we have just recently harvested, final harvested this track. And we are in the process now of getting it site prepped uh, for ready for replanting this following planting season. Uh, we planting this track with a machine. We are big into machine planting, which we also provide that service ourselves as well and machine planting uh, is very beneficial. The, the survival rate is very good on it compared to hand planting. Machine planting is usually about 90% survival plus, uh, where hand planting, you could get 90%, but more, most times from what I've seen, you know, you, you've got a human error in there that could cause it to be uh, around 70, 75% survival rate. And the growth rate of the machine also helps the seedlings uh, from the rip that we put in, the packing of the soil from the machine. It just gives the trees the best start that they can have. Uh, the downside to machine would be a cost. Uh, it's just a matter of the client or landowner's option to uh, spend that extra money to make sure that they get a good start and good growth on their trees. Uh, with the machine, we plant those uh, on an 8 by 12 foot spacing. That puts out 454 trees per acre. Uh, if I'm hand planting, I'm going to plant more trees because of the decrease in survival rate. So I'm going to put more trees out there. Usually it's about an 8 by 10 spacing. is 545 trees per acre. Uh, as far as the acreage that we've uh, determined that it is, we can either GPS the track if we, we also do skitter spraying as well, this track will be skitter sprayed. 
And on our skitter sprayer, we have a GPS on it. So when we spray the track, when we've got the number of acres that we completely spray at that time. So I know the acres that it's, the track is and know how many seedlings I need to get for that particular track. Um, and you can do aerial spraying. We do aerial spraying as well. Uh, or we contract out the aerial spraying. This year has been very tough on the logging as well as the, the planting end of it. Uh, machine planting, like I mentioned, that the wet weather can hurt it because if tracks are too wet, then not only is the, we plant with the dozer and a small uh, planter behind it, but that uh, can make the dozer not stand up in wet sites, but it also can make the planter not plant properly. And that's what we've ran into this year. Not as much the dozer falling through and getting stuck as much as the soil is just too wet and the packing wheels are not able to pack the seedlings properly. So we've ran into that issues this year and it has made us move later in the year of planting than we normally would. Um, but I think with the moisture that we've gotten and all the, everything we've been given, I think it's gonna be fine. I believe we're gonna be okay pushing it that late in the year, so. At about age 15, after the trees are planted, uh, on, on a pine stand, you'll, you'll operate, a, have a first thinning. And, and you'll take out the poor quality trees, the slower growth trees, the, the smaller trees, to leave a, leave a good stand. And then after about another eight to 10 years, you will have a second thinning and do the, essentially the same thing and leave a stand that is ready for your final harvest. So, so you will have crop trees left, your best trees that are, have your best growth that are gonna produce your uh, most desirable uh, crop tree when it's mature. So, and, and along the way, you will perform some, uh, some activities that include burning. As you can see, this, this stand has, has had, had a fire go through it to control unwanted vegetation, or you will have a herbicide treatment which, which chemically kills unwanted veg vegetation. Uh, that total time period from plant to harvest on a pine stand similar to this is approximately 30 years. Uh, this stand is approximately 25 years old, so it will, it has had a first and second thinning, grow about five more years before final harvest. Uh, if it's a hardwood stand, you have a much longer uh, time period. It usually takes up to 70 to 80 years, maybe 100 years, before that stand has a final harvest or of mature trees. Southern pine beetle is, is a major pest that we, we look out for and we've been fortunate over the years that it's, it's not been a major problem the last few years, but it's always something that we look for. And the, the major solution to that, that management is to harvest the trees that have been affected and also those on a buffer that have not been affected. Uh, that's, that's always something to look at on a yearly basis to make sure that that's not a problem. There are other pests that are, are not as big a problem as the southern pine beetle. That's the major uh, devastating pest that, that we face in a, in a pine stand. But you have some, some pests that, that will kill two or three trees. Uh, you have lightning that, that occurs that sometimes uh, kills a tree here and there. But pesticide treatment is not really an uh, economical option on forest management, but uh, there are some that do that, but it's generally it's not an economical option. The first thing that I tell landowners that are looking for that is first determine what your objective is. What do you want to accomplish uh, from this forest, from your, from your stand? Once you determine that, whether it's monetary, whether it's recreation, you know, whatever it may be, contact a, a forester or someone that you, that has experience in that area and, and talk to them about, about what, what you want to do and, and, uh, and try to accomplish those goals. Uh, sometimes it means you don't do anything. 
Sometimes it means you want to want to have a harvest, want to have a thin. Sometimes you want to harvest it, replant it. Uh, it, it varies, but, but contact someone that, that you are comfortable with, someone you trust, check references, uh, you know, visit with someone that you, you feel good about that can help you establish uh, and accomplish the goals you're looking at. First, when the forest department decides that a stand is ready to be harvested on first thinning or second thinning, or even as we see here, a uh, clear cut, uh, final harvest. Uh, my job is come in here, check the boundary lines, flag them, uh, so the f person on the fellow buncher can see the lines clearly. Then check the ground, make sure it is ready to, to where well, we won't rut the ground a lot. And then, I actually, when I do that and mark the SMZs, I bring the crew in here with crew foreman, walk over the land with him, uh, have any questions for him, uh, I can answer those, make sure he knows where all the lines are and any problem, any SMZs that uh, might occur, answer those questions for him. Then once uh, we bring the equipment in, the fellow buncher will uh, cut up the trees, cut the trees, put them in a pile for the skidder to bring to the delimmer uh, at the set. And at the set, the delimmer delims the trees, uh, then it, uh, cuts them up into pulpwood, logs, and put them in separate piles to be taken to the mill. If you have a suitable weather and a 40 acre uh, plot could take anywhere from two to four weeks. And it, it all depends on uh, if you have breakdowns or if you have uh, the different uh, mother nature brings to you. Uh, God might t tell you it needs rain and so you have to lay off some, but Usually 40 acres is, is two to four weeks. Weather this year has been extremely difficult. Uh, it has, we have lost some time there, just like anybody else, but to take care of the land and take care of it properly from the planting all the way to the final harvest. The final harvest, if you don't want to rut it too much, so it, it will cause the problems on the planting and and stuff so it has been difficult but nothing that we hadn't experienced before. Trucking uh is a big part of it. You really don't realize when you go in the logging business, you also need to be in the trucking business. Uh, so it puts you in the trucking business. Uh, when the trucks uh, get, uh, once we get the logs put into the set, the trucks come to the logging set and pick up the logs and take them to the mills. Uh, we have to have drivers. Uh, there is a shortage of drivers in, in, in this area, in Arkansas, and in the logging industry right now. But um, we manage, we have contract trucks that come haul logs too. But we have to have our own trucks and we have to have drivers. Uh, they're, uh, trucking is, is a, uh, a big part of the logging industry. Here we have around 20 trucks. Uh, we, we have about 10 contract trucks, so we run about 30 trucks up and down the road in Arkansas every day. Uh, you know, you'll see Tri-W logging on, on, on the door anywhere in the state. We kind of uh, cover about a 50, 60 mile radius of rise in Arkansas, uh, but we go to mills all around. Wherever the, wherever the uh, mills pay for the lumber, pay for the logs, we take them there. Uh, logs, uh, cost more than the pulpwood. 
Uh, pulpwood normally goes to the paper mills, logs go to the log mills, make lumber. And um, as, as far as the, the value of that load of logs on, on a truck, you know, you could be anywhere from uh, $300 to $1,000 per, per load. South Arkansas, one of the biggest industries in South Arkansas is timber. Um, of course, this timber is grown here, but it goes all over. So it takes these trucks to get it there. Most of the time, private landowner tracks, uh, they don't have good access. So we have to build roads in to get the large equipment in uh, and be able to pull the, pull the logs out with the trucks. So we come in prior to the logging job moving in. A lot of times we'll have to bring some equip, some logging equipment in, such as the fellow bunchers or the skidders, to cut trees out beside the road. And then we'll bring dozers and tracos in, dump trucks, build the roads, uh, get them compacted. We even put a roller packer on this road to uh, make the compaction good because we're coming up a pretty steep hill coming out of this uh, actual location. Most people think, well, you got timber, you just hire a logging crew to come in and cut it. Well, that's not usually that. Uh, we normally don't have access. Uh, as in, in this case, the, the land, the track of timber does not touch the county road. So we have to get access from the adjacent landowner that would connect us from the track of timber that we're working on to get us to the county road. And in the process of being able to haul out onto the county roads, we also have to talk with the county judge, put up bonds, stuff like that, to be able to use the roads in their counties. My interest in forestry started in 4-H when I was a kid, uh, and we went, and that led me into college and with a degree in forestry, and I went to work for industries, uh, for a couple of industries around, and then went into business for herself in about 1972. And that, from that, we've grown into where we are now. Uh, we've owned, we bought timberland and own timberland, but the main thing was to offer services to landowners in order to do it, and that's what this sawmill does. Uh, it, it gives an end product to the to the landowners in developing uh, when they grow their grow their trees to maturity. Uh, we we sell here at our mill. We got hardwood, making ties, lumber for furniture, for pallets, uh, for uh, trailer flooring, hardwood flooring for houses. All of the products that we make here end up going to those to the final process. As you harvest timber, as you harvest the pine, it ends up going into uh, sawmills that do construction lumber for, uh, for homes and uh, buildings and, and uh, treated products uh, that, uh, that people have used all, all, all along. Utility poles comes out of the forest here. We have a, a utility uh, pole treating plant here in Rising. All of those things come out of the out of the uh, forest. We have the, as you've seen, where we had harvested the trees. Some of that product goes goes to the paper mill, which ends up making uh, uh, paper products, such as uh, paper towels, toilet paper, uh, magazines. Uh, used to be newspaper prints, not as much that it used to be, and all of that comes from come from our, uh, come from the forest that we that we harvest the logging produces the logs out of the woods for the landowners, and then they go to a final uh, destination for harvest. Some goes to paper mills, some goes to OSB, which is in construction now. It takes a small log and makes uh, a good product out of it for sheeting and, and plywood. A lot of the, a lot of the landowners are, are small landowners that have, uh, it's, a, it's a family history in their land. So their, their history was to grow trees and to, produce, and to produce a product and to keep a perpetual income coming from that forest. Uh, over the years, that has developed into what we call the, the 
even age management, which is clear cutting and planting and, and having row, row crops in pine trees or, or row crops in hardwood trees. I started out with the desire to help landowners. Uh, I wanted to see that the landowners got the full value for their products uh, that they had on, had on their land. And so we have, we developed our company along that line of assisting landowners. We assist landowners in planting trees, we assist trees in growing trees, and harvesting trees, and now in milling trees and, uh, and producing the final product on it. And so I've seen it come from wagons to, to, uh, to skitters. We, at one time we took farm tractors and made skitters out of them. Uh, take dozers and make skitters out of them. Now we're, we're, grow, uh, we're producing equipment that is specialized in going out into the timberland. We see the cutting machines, the skitters, and all the, all the products that are specialized. We have technology in this mill that replaces, uh, we have young people out there that run in the mill that uh, used to, an old man had to do it because he had to have the experience and the, uh, the experience and the know-how of managing the equipment there. I can remember where a logger, if he thought he had, could get four loads a day, was doing good, and now we can get 20 loads a day. For our, and that lowers the cost of producing the product to the, to the homeowners and others that, that out there because everybody's got to, got to make a living, but the more we can produce with equipment, the better off we are. Nothing we do in Arkansas in forestry and timber markets now is independent or in a silo away from the rest of the domestic market or the international market. Uh, tariffs in China affect loggers and sawmillers in Arkansas, big time, especially in the hardwoods. And so we are connected to everybody and the good thing for the markets for timber is the population continues to grow. It's a little scary about that on some other things, but we have the supply of wood for paper, for shelter, for furniture, for the growing world population. Uh -huh.